Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HTTP Test here. I'm here in California testing this 75 inch mini LED television from TCL. Now the company has hired sort of a studio space to put this television and also several other TVs for us to compare. But when I first arrived at this address, I generally thought that this was a spa. And so let's hope that this review has a happy ending. But let's come back to the TCL 8 series. The model number is Q825 and it will be available in both 65 inch and 75 inch versions. And our review sample is the 75 inch model, which retails for around 3000 US dollars. I believe that the smaller 65 inch model will cost around 2000 US dollars, which is very competitive if you ask me. Now, in terms of the design, because this TV's unique feature is its mini LED backlight, it will be using more than 25,000 mini LEDs as its backlight. Now, the chassis is thicker than OLED, but if I'm honest with you, the thickness of any TV doesn't really bother me as long as it delivers good picture quality. Who cares whether it is thick if you look at it from the sides. The panel sits on top of a metallic T-bar stand shaped like a Tolberone and there is a central TCL logo at the bottom border of the bezel. There is also a Roku TV branding on the bottom right corner and the connections are found on the right rear of the display including four full bandwidth HDMI 2.0 ports whose only HDMI 2.1 feature is ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode. TCL markets it as auto game mode. What this will do is to automatically switch the TV into a more responsive game mode with lower input lag if you start playing a game through a compatible console such as the Xbox One X. Now, obviously in the HDMI 2.1 specifications, there are various other features including EARC or enhanced ARC, variable refresh rate or VRR. But at this moment in time, TCL won't be committing to implementing these features on this TV. They are investigating the possibility, but they won't be guaranteeing or committing to implementation. So if you buy this TV, the TCL 8 series, it is best for you to think that the only HDMI 2.1 feature that is available on the set is ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode. The supplied remote control is small and minimalistic with volume rocker buttons on the side but there is no input source button so if you wish to change input sources you would have to press the home button twice in succession which will bring you to the screen where you can switch inputs. The Roku TV smart platform is very responsive and intuitive to use. It provides all the streaming apps that you could hope for and also there is a Dolby app which will allow you to watch some Dolby Vision and maybe Dolby Atmos content. I think there are at least 10 video clips here. This is to allow owners to enjoy some premium Dolby Vision HDR content in case they haven't subscribed to Netflix or don't have any other sources with Dolby Vision output. So you can start enjoying some Dolby Vision content, even though these are just probably trailers, teasers, very short clips, but at least you will be able to enjoy the Dolby Vision presentation on your new TCL 8 series. Next, let's move on to talk about picture quality and as always, we always start with blacks and contrast. The panel in use here is a VA type LCD panel with true RGB subpixel structure as you can see from our macro shot here. Now, as with most VA type LCD panel, it will be able to deliver deep blacks by LED LCD standards, but the viewing angles will be narrower so it will lose some contrast and color saturation beyond 30 degrees of axis. On the 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, native blacks measured 0.018 cadelas per square meter, once peak white was aligned to 120 cadelas per square meter. And this TV is capable of delivering high native contrast. 
But in addition, the TV is also equipped with local dimming. Now we put up our normal test pattern, which consists of a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the edges of a black background. And we counted 30 vertical columns and 30 horizontal rows, giving us a total of 900 individually dimmable zones. Each zone will have around 28 LEDs in a 7x4 grid. So if you times 900 by 28, you will get a total number of 25,200 mini LEDs in use on this TCL8 series, which is mind-boggling really when you think that even the most advanced full array local dimming LED LCDs on the market probably will only have at most hundreds of LEDs and with 900 individually dimmable zones, this will be the highest number of local dimming zones on a 75-inch model, I think among all full array local dimming or FALD LED LCDs that I've reviewed across the years. Only the 100-inch Sony ZD9 or Z9D has a higher number of zones. That probably has a thousand zones, but 900 is certainly something to be proud of, especially on a 75-inch model. And because of this high number of zones, when you use local dimming, especially local contrast high, which is necessary to achieve the deepest blacks and also the highest peak brightness, on the centermost black patch in a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, we measured a black level of 0.001 candelas per square meter, essentially as good as black. So the contrast performance is going to be very high, but unfortunately in HDR mode, I found that this TV crushed some shadow detail. So the darkest detail will be missing or will be very indistinct. And you can see this on the Spears and Mansell brightness pattern here. But because of the high number of local dimming zones, Cinemascope movies will have jet black top and bottom letterbox bars with very minimal blooming or light leakage into the black bars, even in this very challenging scene from Batman vs Superman where there are several extremely bright lights at the edges of the active picture area. And the TCL 8 series handled it like a champ, keeping the black bars black while keeping hallowing and blooming artifacts to a minimum. And when we want to judge the effectiveness of local dimming algorithm, we will also try and look for backlight fluctuation. And I think the scenes that I normally use are this one from Gravity, that's in SDR, and also another one from The Revenant where there are really bright white subtitles appearing and disappearing from the scene. And on both scenes, the TCL Q825 handled it superbly and didn't introduce as much backlight fluctuation as let's say Samsung's QLED televisions. Obviously, because OLED has pixel level illumination control, it will always do better. So. If you want to really look for it on a full of local dimming LED LCD television, even one with as high a number of local dimming zones as the TCL8 series, you will always be able to find some flaws. Especially if you walk off axis, the blooming will be visible. But on axis, I would say that the blooming and the luminous stability is good enough to satisfy most people out there. Besides crushing some shadow detail, at the other end of the contrast ratio spectrum, the TV is also favoring dimming some specular highlight to minimize the appearance of blooming or hallowing artifacts. This is a trick that has been employed on Samsung televisions. As you can see from this expanding white circle here, the periphery is slightly dimmer than the center. And also as the circle expands, because of the local dimming algorithm, you can sometimes see some vertical artifacting as the circle fills up the screen. Next, let's talk about colors. I started by using my Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer to check the spectral power of distribution of this set. And indeed, 
The beautifully shaped red, green and blue curves are indicative of quantum dot technology and it is a quantum dot enhancement film that is in use on this TV. Next, we tried our hand at calibrating this television and there are several things that we need to pay attention to. The first thing is that the calibration only really works if you download an app. You need to use a Roku TV app on your mobile phone which will unlock some expert picture settings including gamma control, including noise reduction, and also white balance and the color management system, which is based on RGB, just like Samsung televisions. And without this app, these settings will not be available in the user menu. So you will need to download this app before you can perform advanced picture calibration on this TV. And with regards to the calibration, we needed to switch local dimming off to achieve a flat grayscale and also accurate colors. On this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 color patches were measured, we obtained an average delta error of 1.17 and a maximum delta error of only just slightly more than 3, which is the visible threshold. But bear in mind that these measurements were taken with local dimming disabled. If you enable local dimming, the TB appears to be applying some sort of dynamic contrast as well. As you can see from this 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, if we engage local dimming, even on the low setting, it will brighten the white patches as well, causing the whole calibration to be thrown off in terms of the luminance. So I'm not sure whether it is an intentional technique used by TCL, but I know some other manufacturers, including Sony and Panasonic, they use a separate lookup table to try and compensate for the hues and also the luminance depending on the dimming level, and maybe that is something that TCL can look into. That's it. After calibration and even with local dimming enabled, colors look natural enough, although it won't reach the color accuracy of OLED or Sony LCDs, which have lookup table to compensate for their local dimming technologies. Also, another thing to mention with the Roku TV app calibration is that once you calibrate the white balance, the same white balance will be used in color temperature warm across all of the accurate picture modes, regardless of whether it is in SDR, HDR, or in Dolby Vision. So it worked very, very well. So once I calibrated the white balance in SDR, when I went into HDR, the grayscale was very accurate as well. So well done to TCL on that. It avoids us having to recalibrate again. Next, we will move on to motion. And the first thing that I really want to stress is that this TV has a native 120Hz panel, even though there is no guarantee that it can actually accept 120Hz video signal. And to be honest, I don't think there are many TVs out there that can accept 120Hz signal anyway. I think you generally don't really need to accept 120Hz signal if you are not, say, playing games on a high performing PC or you're not actually watching high frame rate content and those are going to be quite far away, especially in the broadcast world. So yes, it has a 120Hz panel natively, but I don't think it is capable of accepting 120Hz video signal and you don't really need the latter because a native 120Hz panel is important for a couple of reasons. And the first reason is this TV can apply 5.5 pull-down correctly to deliver 24p movies in a smooth manner without any telecynic judder. And also, there are a couple of options in the user menu, namely action smoothness, action clarity, and also LED motion clarity, all of which can impact on the motion, and I'll go through them one by one. So action smoothness is equivalent to the Dejada setting on, let's say, LG and Samsung televisions. This will be applied on low frame rate content. By low frame rate, I mean 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second material, and it will smooth out 24p Jada, but 
even on the lowest setting, it will introduce some sort of bright effect or SOE and also interpolation artifacts. So I tend to turn it off for everything really. And then next would be action clarity. This is equivalent to the de-blur or blur reduction setting on LG and Samsung televisions. And this will apply motion compensated frame interpolation on high frame rate content. By high frame rate, I mean probably 60 frames per second material you get in the United States. And on this motion resolution test pattern consisting of horizontally scrolling lines, you can see that without action clarity engaged, the motion resolution will come in at the sample level baseline of 300 lines. But engaging action clarity will increase the motion resolution to 650 lines, indicating and confirming that this TV indeed is using a 120 hertz panel because there is no way for motion resolution to be increased using frame interpolation if you only have a 60 hertz panel. And then last but not least, LED motion clarity is black frame insertion and enabling this on this TV will increase motion resolution to 1080 lines, but it will also come with all the downsides of black frame insertion, including a lower brightness, although you can compensate using this TV's very high light output. It will also introduce double ghost images and particularly tiresome to many viewers out there, which will put many viewers of LED motion clarity would be the flicker, especially in really bright scenes. Next, we come to video processing. And the first thing that I want to determine is whether the default sharpness of 20 is neutral. And according to the Spears and Mansell Luma Zone Plate test pattern, it is indeed neutral. So if you leave sharpness at 20, you know, it won't be applying any additional edge enhancement. Next, we checked out upscaling using this SMPT RP133 test pattern in 576i. Realistically, I should be using a 480 interlaced version, but it just so happens that you know the <laughs> disk that I have is in PAL. And the good thing about this TCL8 series is that even with standard definition content, overscan can be disabled. And the result is quite decent. I wouldn't say that the scaling is as sharp or detailed as top tier brands, but at least there is very minimal ringing and only a few junk pixels here and there. One thing that I noted with the processing of this TV is that the near black gradation again isn't as good as top tier brands. So on this test pattern, you can see that near black is probably jumbled up a bit and the results can be seen even in a pristine Blu-ray of Skyfall in this very dark scene. I could see more noise and posterization in the dark sky compared with another television that happened to be here for comparison. But bear in mind that this increase in near black noise and posterization is only found in a handful of scenes. I saw it intermittently in certain HDR and also SDR content, but it is not there all the time. It depends on the level at which the blacks and the noise and macro blocking artifacts appear. For gradation, I put on this scene from the Martian and there was very mild posterization in the sky, but I don't think it is something that many people will notice from a normal viewing distance. Next, let's talk about screen uniformity. And traditionally, screen uniformity is the Achilles heel of TCL TVs. So I'm pleased to report that on this 8 series, the screen uniformity appears to be improved. Having said that, I could still see some dirty screen effect. And again, remember what I said earlier about the local dimming generating different rippling effects on screen. So that may create the illusion of a dirty screen effect as well. And the edges are also slightly darker than the center. But I think that this is probably the cleanest TV that I've seen from TCL thus far. TCL's implementation of HDR is quite interesting because the light output is tied to TV brightness and when I measured it, the TV brightness of brighter will give 
almost 2000 nits of peak brightness on a 10% window at D65 and 735 nits full fill. Now, the problem with TV brightness is that the setting is shared between SDR and HDR. And there are five levels of TV brightness ranging from darker, dark, normal, bright and brighter. So in terms of HDR, brighter will give you almost 2000 nits of peak brightness on a 10% window at D65 and then when I measure TV brightness bright it would drop down to 1700 TV brightness normal would be around 1500 TV brightness dark would be 1200 nits and TV brightness darker will be 1000 nits now the problem is that if you had been watching let's say SDR content in a dark room and if you were using TV brightness darker when you play HDR content on the telly the same TV brightness will be carried across so it will still be stuck at the TV brightness of darker necessitating you to manually go into the menu and switch to TV brightness brighter to allow for the highest level of peak brightness which is almost 2000 nits in the case of the TCL 8 series so hopefully TCL can consider implementing HDR in such a way that it is actually independent of TV brightness or that it is forced to TV brightness brighter at all times when HDR content is played back so that owners can enjoy the highest HDR impact and the highest peak brightness now, a peak brightness of 2000 is obviously very exciting and when we watched scenes from Aquaman, let's say this battle sequence here and together with the high color volume, this really does deliver an impact. But what disappointed me on this review sample was that the PQ UTF tracking was far too bright as you can see from these charts here and this will elevate the mid-tone obviously it will generate sort of a wow impact for the majority of viewers out there but from the point of view of accuracy this is far too bright this will elevate the mid-tones and the shadows causing less depth to the image in certain scenes and I sincerely hope that TCL can investigate this and try and implement a more accurate PQ UTF or perceptual quantization electro optical transfer function tracking in the most accurate say dark HDR picture mode. I think if you want to deliver high impact HDR with an over brightened UTF you can do so but you can do so in other modes such as the vivid mode or the bright HDR mode. At least try and preserve one mode for an accurate picture which is the dark HDR mode. And I think that it is probably not entirely TCL's fault because I think a lot of the picture design has been derived from Samsung televisions, the RGB based color management system and how the local dimming was implemented to try and suppress blooming by darkening the specular highlight detail as well and you know that Samsung has been over brightening their PQ UTF on their QLED televisions since probably the Q9FN and then subsequently the Q90R as well for the past couple of years and maybe TCL has been taking inspiration from them but as I stressed again and again, what video enthusiasts really value is an accurate picture and an accurate picture and also an over brightened picture that delivers that wow and impact can coexist on the same TV if you provide them in two separate picture modes. So that is all I ask of TCL. And when it comes to specular highlight preservation in 4008 content, in pan this TV is preserving the detail in the cloud and the sun quite effectively. Next let's talk about gaming. Input lag measured 20 milliseconds in both 1080p SDR and 4K HDR picture modes and as mentioned before this TV supports ALRM or auto low latency mode 
So when we played Forza Horizon 4 from the Xbox One X, the TV automatically kicked into game mode in whichever picture preset that we were using for HDR and the game mode will be greyed out. But interestingly, when game mode is engaged, local dimming is disabled and we try to figure out why and maybe the reason is because if you see here from the Leo Botna tester device, with local dimming disabled, it is 20 milliseconds. And if you engage local dimming on the low or medium setting, it will still stay at 20 milliseconds. But if you engage local contrast high, which is essential to not only deliver the highest peak brightness that this TV is capable of, but also provide the deepest blacks possible, then the input light figure will jump to above 50 milliseconds and maybe that's the reason why local contrast was disabled by default once game mode was enabled. Now, in my opinion, I think you, know, you have to try and choose between picture quality and gaming responsiveness because input lag, if you want to lower it, you have to kill some video processing and by killing video processing, the picture won't look as good. And for me, I'm that sort of person that if I really want to be competitive, and I can be very competitive as you can probably tell from all my videos, if I really want to be competitive, I want the lowest input lag, I don't really care about picture quality, so I would be happy to sacrifice local dimming if I can get the lowest input lag. I think the prettiest picture on screen would be my name on top of the leaderboard in, say, Call of Duty. And I'm happy to achieve that by sacrificing the picture quality, but that's just me. And many of you may want the best of both worlds. You want a good input lag and also you want a pretty picture as well. So I'll be interested to hear what TCL has to say. Maybe it's because of the sheer number of local dimming zones, 900 of them, and the local dimming algorithm has to control all of them. So if you actually engage local contrast high, then it will take up more processing power and increase the input lag. Maybe that's the reason. But again, it's all speculation until TCL can come back to me and say that it is a bug and maybe they can fix it for local contrast high. And there are a couple of things I need to mention before I wrap up. At this studio, TCL has actually set up a 8 series television 75-inch version right next to an OLED in a bright room and they are trying to say that their TV, even though it cannot compete with OLED on an absolute level in a dark room, they do stress that they come very close. The key advantage of an LED LCD television would be its profuse light output suitable for watching in a bright environment. So what I've done here is I've taken up their challenge, you know, how I am. I went into the user menu of the LG C9 to set to ISF Expert Brightroom Mode, the most accurate picture preset, tried to maximize its light output by increasing OLED light, increasing contrast, without clipping highlight detail and also, most importantly, setting peak brightness to high, which LG has allowed us to do for 2019. So that is the brightest picture output from the LG OLED in an accurate manner. And then on the TCL Tele, I also did the same in movie mode to try and maximize light output. You can see that it's genuinely a one-way traffic for the TCL Mini LED television and that is because it is capable of a high light output that is not restricted by ABL, suitable for daytime use in a really bright room. Whereas the LG OLED always will be hampered by automatic brightness limiter, which will limit its full field brightness to 150 nits. So from that point of view, yes, certainly I agree with TCL that in a bright room, the TCL its series may be more effective, but I do think that the anti-reflective filter on the Q825 can be improved. I think if we take inspiration from the best, which is the Samsung QLED televisions, even in dark scenes, you can barely see any reflections, whereas you know, I could still see a lot of reflections on the TCL Q825. 
And that is from the day mode point of view. And last but not least, I need to talk a bit about sound. This is a Dolby Atmos capable television, so it can process Dolby Atmos sound. Even though it doesn't have any up-firing speakers, it will try to deliver it through its down-firing speakers here. So when I watched the scene from The Greatest Showman, I was fairly satisfied with the bass extension and also the volume that can go fairly loud without distortion. But I think that the sound and especially dialogue can be slightly muddy and lacking in precision and clarity because of the down-firing speakers. That is just how it is. I think if you want better sound to go with the picture, you will always have to invest in an external soundbar or home theatre system. So that's a wrap of my findings on the TCL 8 series mini LED television. I think that the hardware is superb, especially considering the price of only 3000 US dollars for this 75 inch screen. It has 900 local dimming zones. It has a very high peak brightness of almost 2000 nits at D65. It has a quantum dot enhancement film that delivers white color gamut almost 80% of Rec 2020 to give you that really high color volume together with the high peak brightness to give you that HDR punch. But from the software side, I think there are several areas of improvement that I would like to see TCL work on and implement. I've fed back my findings to them, so I would like to see that the shadow details are better preserved, especially in HDR mode. I would like to see the PQ UTF tracking be more accurate for HDR10 content. And I think that part of the reason why this over-brightened PQ UTF tracking has been implemented on the TCL TV is because the company may have been drawing inspiration from Samsung who have started this trend since the Q9FN last year and also continuing into the Q90R this year. But as I stressed again and again, you can deliver an overbright and oversaturated picture board to those customers who want it in one picture preset. And you can deliver an accurate picture in another separate picture preset and both can coexist on the same TV. So hopefully TCL can listen to our feedback and address this in future firmware updates. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTP Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.